Hello, my name is Stephen, and this video is about what I've done to make my swamp cooler, my evaporative cooler, more efficient. When I first moved into the house where I'm living, um, it had uh, the swamp cooler with uh, the aspen pads, the ones with the little wood strings. Um, I first thing I did was replace those uh, with the blue pads here. Um, at first I used a single blue pad, and then I realized, hey, wait a minute, um, there's a significant amount of room uh, left over when I put in a single pad. Uh, and uh, so I decided to try putting in two pads. I noticed that uh, the house became significantly cooler uh, using the two pads. Uh, and I figured out, okay, that's because the two pads provides extra area for um, evaporation. A second benefit of using two pads can be seen right here. This is an old pad that I've just pulled out. Uh, I should say pad set. Uh, there's a lot of dirt and dust in here. Um, in any dry area of the country, there's going to be dust in the air. Uh, that's just the nature of uh, living there. Now, uh, there's dirt here. If I pull this up, you can see that there's also dirt and dust on the inside and um, on the outside of the inner pad. However, if I bring up this pad, you can see that it's a quite a bit cleaner than um, the other pad, even the, uh, the outside of the inner pad. So basically what that means is, just by using two pads, there's a lot of dust that's not getting inside my home. Okay, now here's what the uh, frame looks like with two pads and the retainer clips in place. As you can see, the pads are pillowing up just a little bit and uh, nice and tight here in the edges. Uh, what I did was I measured the entire uh, length between uh, the interior edge uh, from one side to the other and I, I cut the pads to exactly that length and I did the same for top to bottom, but I went just a little bit more because they tend to shrink down just a little bit over the course of the cooling season, the heat season where you need the cooler going. And so I didn't want to have a gap at the top uh, where hot air was coming in to mix with uh, the cool moist air that had gone through the pads. Okay, here we are in the backyard. Uh, what you're seeing here is the water feed line for the swamp cooler. I have two uh, filters. Uh, you can see I put them on in on uh, May 15th last year. Uh, I have two filters here um, that help uh, remove minerals from uh, the water line so that I get uh, less minerals going into the uh, swamp cooler itself and over here is a drain. Uh, this is one inch PVC pipe and in the morning with the pump off all I have to do is come out here let this run until the uh, water slows down. At that point the pan of the swamp cooler up on the roof is empty. Close the valve and the uh, pan in the swamp cooler fills up. The reason I chose one inch uh, PVC and uh, some valves that I, or some connectors that I can take apart by hand is because I don't want scale coming from the bottom of the pan there. Um, when I clean it out, to clog the, the uh, line and me not be able to clean it out. I've had to open the line up once in the five years that I've had this in place and uh, run a hose down it to uh, get some large pieces of scale out of the way. Other than that, most of the time the scale just flows down the pipe and out there ends up on the ground and then I pick it up. No problem. Okay. Here we are inside the house. This is a thermostatic control for my swamp cooler. Basically, this unit uh, has two switches here. I can have it on 
fan only or fan and pump. And of course, because it's hot outside, 102 today, uh, I have it on fan and pump. The system can be off, low, or high. When I turn this to the on setting, the light starts blinking. That indicates that the pump is running, wetting down the pads. Um, that runs for about four minutes, and the uh, pads are, are thoroughly wet, and then the, the blower comes on. When it gets down to the preset temperature, uh, this unit shuts off, and when it becomes, it gets the temperature inside it gets three degrees warmer than the preset temperature, it uh, turns back on. Um, this cost me about $40, and I was able to install it myself uh, in, in a direct replacement of the rotary switch that was uh, there before I put this in. This is the last modification that I made, uh, not to the swamp cooler itself or the controller, but to the house. These, uh, this is called an updux. I've got one in each bedroom, uh, one in the kitchen, one in the living room. Um, these have uh, lids on them that are have a counterweight counter spring so that they're almost weightless so that as soon as the swamp cooler comes on the lids open and the cool air flows out of my home into the attic uh, attic air it, depending on the color of your roof can be anywhere between 160 and a little over 200 degrees inside there that causes a lot of what scientists call heat pressure in other words, um, if you don't have a, a phenomenal amount of insulation with, and you've got a dark roof and your attic is a little over 200 degrees, that heat is pushing through your insul insulation and going into the home. So by doing this, I discovered uh, when I went up there with the cooler going one day that it was less than 100 degrees in the attic and um, actually a pleasant environment to work in uh, compared to the way, that, the way it could have been. So, I hope that uh, this video has been helpful to you. Uh, if you have a swamp cooler and you want to uh, make it work better for you, um, I really hope this uh, helps you to get your home a little cooler, more efficient, and uh, more effective. Have a nice day.